the last video, we saw that if you start with a group G and you have subgroups A and B, and you assume that A is contained in the normalizer of B, so that the product set AB is a group, then the index of A intersect B inside of A is the same as the index of B inside of AB. Or said another way, the number of left cosets of A intersect B inside A is the same as the number of left cosets of B inside this product set AB. So you don't need this A inside the normalizer of B assumption. You don't need the product set AB to be a group for this statement to be true. So let me explain what I mean. Let's go back a little bit and look at proposition 13 in section 3.2. So what does this say? Let's let H and K be finite subgroups of a group G. Then the size of the product set is equal to the product of the size of H times the size of K divided by the size of the intersection. So let me note and really emphasize that because we did not assume that H is in the normalizer of K, this product set HK is just a set. It's not necessarily a group. OK, so the proof here involves some clever counting and an application of Lagrange's theorem. So let's start with the counting part. So this product set HK is a union of left cosets of K. So it's everything of the form H1 times K, everything of the form H2 times K, up to whatever the last element in H is times K. Uh, everything in HK is in one of these sets. But we want to say something about the size of HK. So we need to know how many of these cosets are distinct. So now we're going to use what we know about when two cosets are the same. HIK equals HJK if and only if HJ inverse times HI is in K. So this is something that came up when we were characterizing when is a subgroup normal. So if you have this element hj inverse times hi, definitely that's in h. So if it's in k, then it's, it's in k if and only if it's in h inverse k. Because you get that it's in h for free, because h is a subgroup. So what does that mean? So, uh, so hi times k equals hj times k, if and only if hi times h inverse k equals hj times h inverse k. OK, so what does this say? The number of distinct left cosets of the form something in h times k, so the number of these that are distinct, is the same. Let me really emphasize that. It equals the number of distinct left cosets of the form something in h times something in h inverse k, sorry, h intersect k. So we're relating these kinds of cosets to these kinds of cosets. And we don't know how many of these cosets there are, but we know the number of distinct cosets in this set is the same as the number of distinct cosets of the form h times h intersect k. And now the key thing is we know something about the number of cosets of H intersect K inside of H because H intersect K is a subgroup of H. This is not something that we knew over on this side about just the product set H and K. So we're counting these distinct left cosets by showing it's the same as the number of left cosets of a subgroup inside of a group. So I'm going to pause and erase, and I'll show you the conclusion of the proof that involves Lagrange's theorem. And then uh, we'll talk about another way to think about this. Let's finish up this proof. So we know that the number of distinct left cosets of the form h times k for h in little h and h is the same as the number of distinct left cosets of the form uh, little h times h intersect k, where little h is in h. OK, so now, since H intersect K is a subgroup of H, by Lagrange's theorem, we know the number of this second kind of cosets. This is the index of H intersect K in H 
It's the size of H divided by the size of H intersect K, which means that the product set H times K consists of size of H divided by size of H intersect K left cosets. And all of these left cosets have the same size. That size is the size of K. So how big is the product set HK? It's the size of H over the size of H intersect K. That's the number of cosets times the size of each coset, the size of K. Okay, so I like this a lot. This is the kind of like counting group theory uh, that you can really get your hands on and see that two numbers are the same because you can split up one set into a union of other sets in a clever way. So I'm going to pause and erase and say something else about uh, how you can think about this problem. Before moving on, let's just look at this question another way. So we start with two subgroups, H and K of G. This product set H times K is just a set. We don't know that it's a group because we haven't made the assumptions that turn it into a group. And what we claim is that the set of left cosets of H intersect K in H, so this is a subgroup inside of a group, and the set of left cosets of K in HK. So what is that? It's just a set of left cosets of K inside this product set that contains K are in bijection. How are we going to see that? We can write down a map that goes from this quotient, or sorry, not this quotient group. We don't know that H intersect K is necessarily a normal subgroup, right? So it doesn't necessarily make sense to put a group structure on this set of left cosets. But we're just going to define a map that takes left cosets of H intersect K in H to left cosets of K inside this product set HK. And how are we going to define that map? We'll just take the left coset of H intersect K containing an element G is going to go to the left coset of K containing G. So what are we doing? We're sending each coset in this first set of cosets to the left coset of K containing it. Right, so every coset here is of the form like something in H times something in the H intersect K, and every coset here is of the form something in H times something in K. So we're just taking this H intersect K and making it bigger. We're like turning it into K. So I don't want to do all the details here, but if you think about exactly what's going on with this map, it tells you that the number of left cosets of H intersect K in H is the same as the number of left cosets of K inside HK. So here I just want to call make a, a point about the notation. I'm using the same index notation. Before, we've only used index to refer to the number of left cosets of a subgroup inside a bigger group. But here, what I mean is it's the number of left cosets of K inside this product set, HK. OK, so I want to pause and erase. And I just want to talk about one example application of the second isomorphism theorem. I want to end this lecture with one kind of neat application of the second isomorphism theorem. So when you prove these theorems about groups, I often find it's helpful uh, to think about what those theorems say for the easiest examples of groups you can come up with. And very often, the easiest examples are like Z or a finite cyclic group. So what does the second isomorphism theorem say for Z? So let's take G equals Z. Our first subgroup A will be AZ for some positive integer A. And then we'll take BZ for some positive integer B. All right, so what's the intersection of A and B of these subgroups? Uh, it's not so hard to see that that intersection should be the least common multiple of A and B times Z, right? Because if you want something in the intersection, it has to be a multiple of A and a multiple of B. So the least common multiple is in there, and every other multiple is in there too. So what about the product set? Well, I claim that this is GCD AB times Z. And why is that? Well, the Euclidean algorithm tells us that there exist M and N in Z such that the GCD can be written as M times A plus N times B, that it's a linear combination of A and B 
with integer coefficients. I think this is sometimes called Bezu's identity also. But that means that the GCD is in this product set. Uh, and you can show inclusion the other way as well. OK, so the second isomorphism theorem says A mod A intersect B is isomorphic to AB mod B. And maybe you'll complain that we didn't say that, like, oh, A is contained in the normalizer of B. But when your group is abelian, all the subgroups are normal. So there's nothing really to check. OK, so what does this say? So AZ mod LCM ABZ is isomorphic to GCD ABZ mod BZ. Let's just equate the orders of these groups. So the index of LCM ABZ inside of AZ is A over the LCM of AB. And the index of BZ in GCD ABZ, well, that's the same because these two groups are isomorphic. So uh, when your subgroups are normal, the index is the size of the quotient group. And these quotient groups have the same order. Here, this index is GCD AB over B. So tracing through, what do we see? A over the LCM is GCD over B. Or if you take a product, you get A times B is the GCD times the LCM. OK, the easiest way to prove this fact is not using the second isomorphism theorem for groups. You can just look at the prime factorizations of A and B and like count how many powers of each prime you have. You can easily write down the GCD and the LCM in terms of these prime factorizations. But what I want to show is that when you have a new theorem in group theory, and you can apply it to examples, see what it says for these easy examples like Z. And hopefully, stuff like this will happen where you recover facts that you know, but non-trivial facts that you know.